Where are you guys going to miss Morgan the most, I guess? Oh, I think uh, you, we're going to miss him, obviously, in all all aspects of the game. He plays uh, every situation, obviously a top top guy in the league. So uh, it's on us, uh, you know, as, as a group of six now to step up and, and fill those minutes. And, and uh, I think guys are excited for, obviously it sucks losing Mo, but guys are excited for the opportunity and guys coming in the lineup. You mentioned you did, even you were looking for more last night. How much more do you, like, you're, you're not a young buck anymore. How much more do you feel you have to give? Oh, I mean, as a player, you always want to, you know, I, I, I don't know. Many guys will tell you they want less ice time. So uh, you're always looking for more opportunity. It doesn't matter uh, who you are. And, and uh, you know, I think we've done a good job with missing a uh, couple, you know, a couple big big guys in uh, Muzz and, and Broads already. And now it's another another guy going down. We ha we have to step up. I think uh, you know it's important for us as a group of six to to fill those minutes, but as a whole team to really defend well and play well as a group of five on the, when we're on the ice to, you know, to kind of lock it down. You mentioned before that guys like Timothy and Rasmus, like, uh, this is kind of like their year where they, they, they want to kind of take that next step and I guess there's no opportunity like the present for guys like that. Yeah, I think you can see uh, uh, with those two that, you know, as games, every game goes by, you see them getting more, I think, more and more confident and I think uh, uh, last game was really good and, and uh, now they're going to get a, obviously a really good opportunity to probably play top four minutes, and and, and uh, I think they're ready for it. I think they're both are incredibly poised uh, with the puck, both of them. They play well together, and uh, it's a great opportunity. Opportunity. Expecting a fight right away when you went in there, were you just trying to grab him or cross check him, or what were you thinking going through your head? Well, I didn't like the situation, so um, I just kind of was going to skate over to him and kind of. You know, grab him a little bit, and um, you know, things escalated pretty quickly. So, um, but yeah, it was uh, it was good. I didn't like that hit. So, um, as, uh, as I said yesterday, we're a team, so we're trying to stick up for each other. When was the last time you got in a fight? Probably like two years ago in the AHL. Um, but that's probably the one time uh, I dropped the gloves at least. What did Austin say to you after we noticed that he skated up to you? And had him said something. Uh, he just said I was an animal. <laughs> um, no, but he, he appreciated it, uh, as he said, no matter who it is. But we, uh, we're a team. We're trying to stick up for each other, and uh, I didn't like that hit. So, um, yeah. Where are you guys going to miss Morgan the most? Well, I mean, he he's just such a good player overall. Uh, I mean, he plays 30 minutes a night pretty much and uh, plays all situations. He's a leader in the locker room, leader on the ice. So uh, we're going to miss uh, miss him in the, lo in the lineup here uh, for um, you know, lots. You know, it hasn't been the easiest start to the season for you. How would you assess where your game's at right now? Uh, it's it's coming along. Um, I don't think it's been terrible some games in the beginning, and then um, you know, uh, confidence-wise, wasn't uh, at a very high level uh, lately. I feel like, and um, you know, just trying to clear my head and play better. I think yesterday was uh, was a big step for both me and Timothy playing together. So I think we we. Um, we did some things really well that we can bring on to the next game. So um, starting to come along. What did you do well? I think we managed the puck pretty well. Uh, we broke the puck out well. Um, we were uh, we were creative out there. So that's something we definitely need to keep on going. What's the opportunity to meet you? It was a huge opportunity now. The team actually like, needs you to step up. Yeah, I mean, first off, when we we, uh, we missed Jake and, and TJ as well. So um, it's three uh, big, big parts of our of our team. Um, not only our decor, but our whole team. So um, it's definitely time for, for all the other guys to step up and fill those uh, big shoes. So um, yeah, it's up to us. We need to, uh, you know, take take a couple steps further here and, and play really good for, for, for the rest of the team here too. What's the key on the top power play unit for you? Uh, just you know, not hold my stick too tight. Um, still play, play the way I play. Um, you know, move the puck quick, and you know, I know what kind of players I'm playing with. So, um, just gotta, you know, relax and, and uh, play as I usually do. What can you tell us about Mac Hollowell? Um, he's a he's a good kid. Uh, I mean, I play with him in the Sioux. Uh, he's my uh, D partner for quite a bit, and um, you know, got 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 some games with him in the on the Marlies as well. So. Um, you know, it's great. It's great, um, great for him to, to have him back up here now, and uh, 
you know, seems like he's going to play tomorrow as well. So I'm super excited for him and I'm super happy for him. Uh, it means everything. I've been uh, waiting for this moment since I was a little kid. So uh, just to get my name called feels really good. How did you get the news? Uh, just sitting in the team meeting room on the on the way out, they let the boys know, and they're all pretty excited. So it's, it's pretty good a moment for me. What do you have to do to have success? What's your mindset going in? Uh, just treat it like any other game. I think when I'm moving my feet and moving the puck, things are good for me. So just try to do that. Would you be able to get any family down there? Uh, I haven't been able to talk to them yet, but I imagine so. Yeah, that'd be a really good moment. When your game is at its peak, how do you feel you're playing? What is your your perfect game in your mind? Uh, probably fast, fast and deliberate. Just uh, making making moves and just sticking to them. What do you think about getting thrown into the fire, Mac? Any game would be fun against the Jersey Devils. Uh, I'm not really looking t into it that far. It's my first game. I'm excited for it. I'm just going to take it uh, minute by minute. When you imagined your first NHL game, what did you dream, I guess, of? Whether it was scoring or a hit, or what did you see? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I was just happy to get in. and. Uh, just want to make my mark with this team and help them win games. What do you think it will be like to play with Jordy? I'll be good. I uh, was with him a bit with the Marley, so I'm comfortable with him. And he's an older guy, a good voice in the room, so it'll be good for me. Is there that added comfort? I mean, you've been around this team a lot over the last mm -hmm. pandemic. Yeah. And then also just being called up a lot and just kind of practicing. For sure, yeah. Like you said, I've been uh, around for four or five years now. I've had the moment during the quarantine. I stayed with some of the guys, so. Pretty comfortable with a lot of them, and it definitely helps uh, moving into this game. What was that experience like, quarantine house? Uh, it was special. Uh, it came to me pretty quick. Wasn't too sure what to expect of it, but it was a really good moment, and still hold those friendships to this day. Any good jumbo stories? Uh, not too many uh, I can share right now, but he's just he's a character, and he's a really good guy to me. What it means for someone like him to take you under his wing? I remember there was that photo of both of you guys sitting together. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he was great to me whenever I was here. He made me feel welcome right from the first day. So a lot of thanks to him and uh, probably get a phone call from him soon. Why cheddar? Uh, just came to his mind. I'd imagine had to do something with my orange hair, but whatever comes to his mind, he, uh, he went with. Morgan the most? Uh, I think a lot. He, he plays a lot of minutes. Uh, I was his first probably. Uh, he's our best defensive defenseman, so uh, we're going to miss him a lot. But, uh, you know, chance for guys to step up and take on a bigger role, play some more minutes, and uh, uh, I think we're ready for it. Brad, saying it felt like a good night for you two last night, a big step forward. What do you think you two can do and bring to the table and elevate? Yeah, I think just keep on going as we've, uh, we've been doing, you know, uh, try and play as good defense as possible and then get the puck to the forwards, follow up in offense, and uh, try and get some most on time. What did you learn from those previous opportunities where you were elevated into higher roles? Yeah, I think uh, get, get a little more flow uh, in your game. We play more minutes and um, you know, kind of in the moment a little bit more. Uh, it's the next shift, next shift, instead of uh, kind of sitting a couple of shifts in a row. So uh, I think it just gets a little bit easier to uh, yeah, so just get, get on the ice a little more. What do you think of Rasmus dropping the glove? Loved it. Um, got the fans going uh, as well, so it was fun to see. I've seen one fight before from him, so uh, uh, he's not afraid to route the gloves. What's the focus on three on three overtime? Score a goal instead of letting in one. What's it like to get that opportunity if you're thrust into it? Yeah, it's, it's fun, you know. Uh, as I said, it's always fun to get an opportunity to. Uh, to be on the ice and, and score some goals. So uh, hopefully, uh, if if I get the opportunity again, I'll put one back in the net. Mark Giordano, 39 years young. He's like eager for more. He's like, give me more. What stands out to you about this guy? Uh, I know he's just a machine. Uh, he works hard, uh, skates well, yeah, even though he's a bit older now. And uh, just a good leader in the locker room. Uh, good guy to be around. Jokes a lot. So um, he's a good mentor. On the ice. How hard is this to fill that that void? Well, listen, like I said last night, uh, it's. I mean, are you a better team when you have Morgan Riley, you know, TJ Brody, or Jake Muzzin in, in the lineup? Of course, you're a better team, but it's not the first time a team has dealt with injuries to key players. It's not the first time our team has dealt with injuries to key players, and each time we've responded well, won games played even better defensively than we were when we had all these guys in the lineup. So just continue to 
play a good sound team game and find ways to win. What's the diagnosis and the timeline? Uh, the, there's no firm timeline. He's obviously on LTI, so let's, you know, you have a timeline there, and beyond that, we'll just have to see how he how he's doing. What's the opportunity now ahead of Rasmus Sandin with Morgan? Out? Huge opportunity there for him, not just him, everybody, but you know, with Rasmus in particular, you know, an increased opportunity on the power play, uh, more minutes. Um, and I think it's everything you want as a young player, you know. So uh, you know, get, look to take advantage of it and all of those things. Uh, you know, as it relates to Rasmus specifically, I think in the last few games I've seen a real uptick in his play. I think he's starting to show way more confidence with the puck and. And uh, obviously, you know, he steps in with the fight and stuff last night. I think that's all sort of all different things that add to your swagger a little bit. Um, and aside from the, the fight, I think he's just really shown a lot more confidence in his overall play lately. So there's, it's good timing in that sense. I think he's in a better place now than he was even a week ago. And uh, you know, obviously, he's going to get lots of, lots of opportunity here. I don't What's recall that? a team ever losing a 1, 2, and a 3 on the defense at the same time. <laughs> What's it feel like to, I mean, you're basically now putting in a half a new defense? Uh, I mean, I really don't overthink it. You know, it's next guy up. You know, that's really that's really it. It's very cliche, but it's just the reality as a coach. is It doesn't do you any good to sit there and, and feel sorry for yourself or anything like that. you got to go play the games. And as I said, each time we've lost a guy and then for a moment maybe you think, well, that sucks. It seems like our team plays better, and uh, so I'm expecting the same. That's that's really it. We, we every every single guy, not just the defense, the forwards have to help support the defense, and collectively we have to support our goaltenders. As our team game continues to improve, we got a chance to beat anybody. I know when you go into a game, uh, you're you're focused on your group and playing the game that you want to play. But do you take any extra motivation? In facing a team that's won 13 in a row and trying to be the team that, that ends their run? I think it's more so, you know, that we, we played them recently and we had a chance to, to end their run at that point in time and failed to do so, despite the fact that we thought we played a good hockey game uh, for the first 40 minutes. You know, our third period and, and overtime were, were not good, but, um, you know, we, uh, you know, I, I feel like we. We're right there with them, and we know we can play with any team in the league. Um, so I think just the fact we played them more recently, and you know, you have that, you know, that uh, extra piece when you get out on the road that you want to go get your points back. What stands out to you about uh, Mac Hollowell and why he deserved the opportunity to be the next guy up? Uh, we just think it's it's time. I mean, he's put in his time in, in the minors. Uh, obviously, we have Mete here as well, and and we've. We've played him, and he'll come on the road with us and be available to us. But you know, it's uh, when you get into a situation like ours with the the injuries that we have, and really you could add Carl Dahlstrom to that as well as a, another uh, option for us that that we're playing without. Uh, you know, you get to give a guy like him an opportunity to go. I think he's played well for us in preseason. He's been up here a number of times previously to practice with us, and he's very comfortable around our group. So I think all things considered, it's a, it's a really good chance for us to get him in and, and allow him to use his, his speed and his ability to move the puck in, in an NHL environment. What's the key for uh, Nick now getting back in? Just look to make a positive impact on the game, both offensively, defensively. Um, Make a positive impact. That's that's really it. Safe to say, Morgan doesn't need surgery. This is something. No, he doesn't need surgery. No. Is there a limit to how much you can push Mark at his age and his career? You might find out. <laughs> um, but it, every time I have a conversation with, with Gio, he's he you know in terms of do you want days off? Do you want to miss some practices? He wants nothing to do with that. He wants to keep the engine firing. Um, and he tells us that he, the more he plays, the better he feels. Just he's a guy that's played in the league a long time and has a certain um, threshold that he likes to get to, to to stay in rhythm and feel good and, and all of that. And as he's gotten older, his, his minutes have gone down a little bit. And at times, he's said that he it, that affects him because he's used to playing more. So it's the balance of of getting to that point where you're feeling engaged and you find real rhythm in your game. Then also making sure you have gas in the tank. Uh, that's on us to manage with him, but uh, he's a guy at this point that has shown to me no signs of slowing down, and is you know as a guy that wants to continue to push. I mean, 
even in practice today, he's one of the first guys on the ice there, this, there today and, and uh, putting in extra work before practice even begins when he doesn't have to. Um, you know, it takes his morning skates, all these kind of things. So it's something for sure as as his minutes are going to climb now more so than we would like or that we had planned. We'll continue to look at it, but he's not a guy to ever say no. A guy like Chelios played 20 plus minutes into his 40s. Some guys just seem to know how to yeah. be able to manage their time on the ice. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And, and I think that's that's on us to continue to monitor and manage, but he's, you know, he. He really feels strongly that he can handle it, and, and not just handle it, but he feels better when he's in the in the rotation and you know uh, more regularly and continue to get over the over the boards. And I think there's there is something to be said uh, for that, um, you know. But the, the responsibility is going to be great in terms of matchups and all those kind of things. So it's it's you know that's on us to continue to manage. But we need we're going to need a little bit more out of everybody, and Geo included. Was it was last night as clean a defensive game as you've had all season. It was close. It was close. I mean, I think there's there's been a few there's been a few others where I think we were right there. Uh, Philly comes to mind, and and there's one or two others there. I think that were really strong for us. Um, but we, we felt we did a really good job defensively last night for sure to give us a chance to win. Obviously, we need to get to that third goal, and then when you get there. A mistake like we made on the second goal doesn't affect you to the same degree. But like, I, like I'm saying, our, our team defense, the way we've played as a group, uh, no matter who's in the lineup, has given us chances to win every single night, and I fully expect that to continue. What's Dean's status, and when he's not on the bench, how does that change the dynamic in the game? Yeah, yeah well, his status is that he's cleared to travel with us. Here. They gave him a little more time. Uh, he was just out with an illness and non-COVID related or anything like that. But he, he's, uh, uh, you know, my understanding meeting with meeting us with the, at the plane. I haven't talked to him in a few hours here, but that's that's the plan. He'll travel with us and it does throw things out of rhythm a little bit. You know, obviously, with the uh, defense coach in particular, it's it's uh, a very unique um, position in terms of the the, the skill set and sort of the team within a team you know, concept with the defense and the penalty kill. But I thought the guys did a good job yesterday. We actually still had Neen deliver his uh, his penalty kill meeting as he normally would, uh, except to do it virtually. And uh, he was feeling well enough to do that. And and I thought Spencer Curry did a great job of filling in in the back end. He's got lots of experience running a bench. So to that end, we, we felt comfortable with it. But certainly it would be nice to have him back. With a kid like Nikki, do you lay out sort of what you said, like you want to make you, we want you to make a positive difference and that's what you need to do to stay in the lineup? Or at this level, is he sort of expected to sort of figure that out himself? Well, we, we, I've talked with him about about that in, in that, in you know, looking to find ways to, to, to make an impact with his, both his skill set and then the way that he can defend and track. And, um, you know, I thought, you know, at times losing, whether it's losing some battles or some defensive positioning, the game starts to slip a little bit from you and your line, and then thus as a team, those are the kind of things for me where, as a young player, you got to really recognize the value in that. Um, so the last impact the game may not necessarily be points. It's uh, sometimes the points aren't going to be there, the offense isn't going to be there, but you got to you know you ensure that you leave the game in a good spot when you come back to the bench. Um, so as young players, that's that's uh, part of the learning uh, process. But uh, you know he's got obviously he hasn't played. We played a lot of hockey here, and he hasn't played, so expect him to have lots of jump. And I know he'll be excited to get in and play. Um, and he has the ability to impact the game for us positively uh, on offense. And I think, you know, the defensive piece, I know he's going to really work and compete. Um, we're going to play against a very good team on the road with tough matchups and, you know, expect him to, to be better in that regard defensively than he was when he was in previously. Unrelated, yeah. last question. Uh, anything basically <coughs> team-wise that's going on. You just passed three years here. Um, you're a Toronto area guy. What has that been like for you? Yeah, I was reminded yesterday that it was three years. It uh, not the sort of thing that I track, and, and uh, three years is uh, a lot. To, a lot has happened. It's been it's been a different world, of course, with COVID and everything being what it has been. But um, obviously, a tremendous privilege um, and opportunity to coach the group and be a part of the franchise. Uh, obviously, it's you know as a guy with a young family, and I'm out in, in the community and um, in the arenas more so than probably most 
uh, uh, people in my position. Um, that creates some unique circumstances, but uh, uh, obviously enjoyed every minute of it. And particular now, as restrictions and things have eased, and my family has been able to be a, more a part of it, like we were when I was first hired, uh, and you know to be connected in that way. That's that's a big deal, not just for me, but even I sense it with some of our players that have been here, particularly the newer guys who haven't been able to have their family around uh, since being a part of our team.